welcome back to another Stitches and Scribbles podcast. I have a lot of stuff to show you today, so let's dive right in with some works in progress. Um, my first whip that I want to show you, unfortunately, isn't a terribly exciting one, but I think I'll get a lot of use out of it once it is done. I am crocheting myself a convertible purse backpack. So it's just in plain black yarn because I needed a plain solid color to start off with. Um, so that it would match everything and all that. But I keep seeing um, bags on Etsy or on Amazon that have convertible backpack straps so that it can be a backpack or a regular purse. So I'm working on the bottom part of the bag right now. So far I really like how it's turned out. Um, I'm just doing it in plain old single crochet. And I'm using Bernat Maker Home Decor for this. I bought two skeins of it. This is how much I have left of the first one. Um, I'm hoping that the straps won't take that much yarn because I think I can finish the body with yarn to spare with just two. Um, but otherwise I ordered it on Amazon so I can always get a third one. Um, but the plan is to continue the shape of the bag until it's the size I want. Probably another four, five-ish inches up. Um, and then do straps that connect at the bottom and connect through loops at the top so that you can pull them out forward to make the backpack straps, but then you can pull it from the top to make it into a shoulder bag. Um, I'm actually making this to go to a bachelorette party where we're going on a pedal tavern. Um, I don't know if other states have this, but these are popular in Wisconsin. It is a basically a giant bike for like 12 people um, and you go bar hopping on it. So I wanted something that would be easy to wear as a backpack while I'm on the pedal tavern so that I'm not dropping anything and it's not hitting my leg while I'm biking. Um, but then once we're going into places safely of course with social distancing, masks, all that stuff, um, that I could convert it so that it's easy to grab things out of like to pay for drinks and stuff like that. So really excited about this project. I hope that it turns out well um, because I think it'll be really cool when it's done. My other projects to show you are actually all shawls today. So the first one that I have, it's hiding inside of a bin. Um, this one looks like a mess when I pull it out, but it's actually a scrap shawl. So I took a bunch of yarn in shades of blue, yellow, red, and kind of beige. And I'm just making a basic triangle shawl. So you can see from the center, I have increases along the center and along the edges. And this is the first item where I'm actually using my stitch markers that I made. Um, I think I mentioned this in one of my previous videos, but I'm hoping to open an Etsy shop over the summer. Um, it's a little too crazy to do it right now, but stitch markers are one of the things I'm planning on selling along with wine charms because they're basically the same construction. You just use a different finding at the top. So these are little skeleton ones I made myself. If you've seen my logo profile pictures that I've used um, since I started my channel, um, I really like skeletons and skulls. So I knew I had to make a set of skull stitch markers for myself. I am almost done with this shawl. I'm going to finish up this yellow and then use this blue yarn to finish it off. Um, I think all of this is, I love this yarn from Hobby Lobby except for these two which were um, little mini skeins that came with my Centro knitting machine, either the 48 or the 22 needle one. I'm not sure which. Um, and I'm knitting on five millimeter needles. This is just all garter stitch other than the increases, so a nice simple pattern um, to use up some scraps. I also found out recently that my local church that I'm a part of um, has a prayer shawl ministry, so I'm hoping to join that because I love making triangle shawls. They're my favorite thing to make, but I obviously can't keep all of them, so I need somewhere for them to go. Um, once I start getting more and more. The next one that I'm working on, which the hook is actually in another project right now, which is why you won't see it, um, is, surprise, another triangle shawl. But I am attempting to 
make this one a written pattern also to be released on my Etsy shop. So right now the working title for this is the Mossy Cottage Shawl and it uses both the linen stitch or moss stitch as well as the basic granny in stripes. I love how this looks with the really pretty ombre yarn. It started off with this kind of sage mint cream color. It goes through shades of green and purple and blue and this is the rest of the cake so it goes from blue to a more royal purple to black. I really love how this is turning out. Um, usually I like working in two weight yarns and three weight yarns but this is a one so it's way smaller than what I'm used to. I bought it just because of the color to be honest um, and I'm using a four millimeter hook which gives it some really good drape. Um, this is also a cotton yarn so it'll be really nice for summer. I am planning on keeping this one because it's got like all of my favorite colors in it but I thought this one was absolutely gorgeous so let me know below if you're interested in seeing this as a written pattern. Um, right now this is my I've made similar things to this before so the pattern was kind of already in my head um, but I'm using this one to take pictures of things and all that stuff because the especially the beginning color was really easy to see on camera. So that will be something that you can look forward to in the next two or three months or so, um, is that Etsy shop opening. My goal is to make things both for fiber artists and fiber art stuff. So I'll be selling some knit and crochet items that I have made, but also things for people who knit or crochet or do other stuff like patterns and the stitch markers that I talked about. Um, my next project to show you is like my most brilliant idea that I've had so far, but for the last few weeks I have kept a crochet project in my purse at all times. So this is my current purse project. You'll see that some of it is reminiscent of the shawl I just showed you because I actually started this one before I started that one and I was using it to test out my linen stitch skills. So. Purse projects. What I like to do, and this is a triangle shawl in case you couldn't see enough of it. I have a very small filming space. Um, purse projects. I prefer to keep a crochet project in my purse over a knitting project because I don't have those little stitch stopper things to keep um, stitches on the needles. So if my crochet hook falls out of my project, I lose two, three stitches maybe. But if my knitting needles fall out, I could risk losing the entire project, which is why I stick with crochet. I also stick with a pretty lightweight yarn. This is a two weight yarn. It's one of the Yarn Bee hand dyed yarns from Hobby Lobby. I don't know if you can hear the garbage truck in the background. I swear the garbage truck is always here when I'm trying to film things. Hopefully you can't hear that too badly. Um, I do have a second skein of this because as you can see I'm very clearly running out. The other thing that I do when I keep a project in my purse is I don't wind it into a cake or leave it in the st in the skein. I do wind it into a ball because it I don't have to worry about a ball of yarn losing its shape. So I keep it that way. I use the lightweight yarn so that it stays pretty small even when the project gets closer to being done. Um, so to talk about the stitches in this one, like I said before, I started with the linen stitch, which I think looks absolutely gorgeous in this variegated yarn. And then I switched over to a pattern of doing two double crochets. I'm not actually doing a single crochet in between like you would for a granny square. I just inserted the stitch into the gap between two stitches from the previous row. So it ends up looking like a granny square, but it's all double crochet. It doesn't have that chain one space like a granny stitch would have. And it's just pairs of two double crochet instead of sets of three. Um, I really like how this is turning out so far, so much so that if the other pattern goes well, I might try to convert this one to a pattern as well. Um, as I move further into the shawl, I'm hoping to work into some like fan or lace style stitches for the end to get those kind of three blocks of different stitches. So that's what I've been carrying around with me for the last couple weeks. Um, just because I kept finding myself in situations where I was sitting and waiting for something or had to sit in my car 
before I could go in somewhere, things like that. So Purse Project was the ultimate solution for that. Those are all the whips I'm going to show you today. I do have more, um, but they're ones that have been sitting in bins for like upwards of three months now, or they're ones that you have seen the progress of on YouTube, like the um, Harry Styles cardigan that I'm working on, um, and my temperature blanket, which I'm very behind on, so I'm not actually going to show that right now. Um, I usually post that one more on TikTok than here anyways. So yeah, you can see those there. Um, I am still working on all of those, but I think over the summer I'm going to have to have a <laughs> week where I either finish everything or frog everything and make myself clean out some of my project bins because my rule when I decided to dedicate more time to knit and crochet was that I was only going to have four projects going at a time. So I only have four project bins. I have two tiny ones that hold like a shawl or a scarf or a hat. I have one medium sized one that can hold like a sweater and one big one that can hold a blanket until it gets too big um, or like a larger fluffier cardigan. And uh, all of those have been full for a while and with no progress being made on the projects. You can definitely hear the garbage truck in the video. I'm very sorry about that. Um, but I ha have a limited time to film, so I have to finish this today. Uh, moving on to finished objects. I don't have a ton of finished objects to show you. Unfortunately, one of the ones I wanted to show you, I gave away already, forgetting that I wanted to show it in a video. Um, but the person was very happy with it, and I do have something else made in the same yarn, so I can still kind of show you what I did. The first finished object, or objects, I want to show you are these. Um, these are dust mittens. So you stick your hand inside. It's the Bernat blanket yarn, which I have discovered is excellent at picking up dust so that you can just wipe countertops or shelves. Um, I had a bunch of Bernat blanket yarn from a couple different projects and didn't really know what to do with it. So this is what I settled on. I actually have like six more of these in a drawer. Um, they work really well. I'm kind of saving them as not gifts because I don't like giving cleaning supplies as gifts. That seems not great. Um, but just to give to family and friends who might be interested in them. Um, the thing that I made that I can't show you because I gave it away was actually a baby blanket that was made in this shade of the Bernat blanket yarn. I believe it's called Beachcomber. It's kind of like a pastel rainbow. It's got some red, yellow, green, and blue, like a tealy blue in it. Um, but I did a baby blanket for a coworker who is expecting, um, and it turned out really pretty. I did it all in half double crochet, and I used the better part of two skeins, which is why I had just this left to make one dust cloth in that color. So these are super fun. Um, hopefully I'll be a little bit more motivated to like clean things, um, but we'll see. The second finished object I have to show you is, surprise, surprise, a triangle shawl. Um, this was one of the prototypes for the mossy cottage shawl that I just showed you. I'll unfold it. So this one still has the same two stitch patterns of the linen stitch and the granny stitch, but it's a different weight yarn. I used a different hook and I did different amounts of the stripes than in the final version because I wasn't sure what I wanted to do yet. Um, this was a yarn from Hobby Lobby. It's a yarn bee cotton, and I don't remember what it was called because I don't have the bands anymore, but you'll see it in the section with all their other cotton cakes. It's a cream with flecks of yellow and navy and like a powder blue, um, which are the colors of both the school I work at and my college alma mater. So I liked the subtle colors in there. Um, this one I added tassels to the corners, which I'm not sure yet if I'll do that on the one I'm making for the pattern yet or not. I think it'll depend on how much yarn I have left, but I thought the tassels looked really cute with the cream colored yarn. Um, I have already gotten a lot of wear out of this shawl because it is lighter weight being cotton. I don't have any cotton triangle shawls yet other than this one and one I made way back 
when I did my first yarn haul from Hobie. It's actually my first video on YouTube. That one is a cotton yarn from one of Hobie's cotton cakes. Um, but I'm really happy with how this turned out. I'm glad I adjusted the sizes of the stripes in the final version to make them a little more uniform. This one I was kind of just doing whatever. This was the experiment one. But I think it turned out very pretty. And the last finished object I want to show you, I actually have more of these than what I'm showing on camera. If you follow me on TikTok or Instagram, you would have already seen these. But I've been making scrunchies using my knitting machine. This is also something that I'm hoping to put in my Etsy shop once that gets going. I noticed that surprise boxes seem to be really popular um, for makers and on Etsy, on Amazon, and like every subscription service you can think of has some sort of a surprise box. And scrunchies are also popular. So I thought that when I open my Etsy shop, I would do curated surprise scrunchie boxes where I let people tell me like their favorite color, what kind of aesthetic they like, you know, if they like glitter, ruffles, plain things, all that stuff. And I would put together a set of scrunchies for them based on what they say. And this served two purposes. One, um, it means that I don't have to keep a million colors in stock. And two, I can use yarn from projects that didn't use up the whole skein of yarn and have some unique items um, ready to give out. These three scrunchies all happen to be the Red Heart something tweed. Roll with it tweed, I think is what it's called. It's a cake yarn that has multiple colors and gradual color changes throughout. So like you can see this one is pink and yellow on the back, but then it turned into the like pink, blue, green. Same thing with this one. You can see the colors. This one ended up all one stripe. Um, but I thought that that yarn looked really cute as scrunchies, but I had leftovers in like four different colors that I didn't know what to do with. So they ended up being really awesome scrunchie colors. So something to look forward to if you like scrunchies. Those will be on my Etsy shop in those surprise boxes. All right, next up, I have a gigantic haul, both yarn and uh, yarn accessories. So let's start with the yarn accessories. I purchased my first crochet book that I've purchased in a really long time. I finally bought the 3D Granny Squares book. I am so excited about this. I think these are absolutely adorable and I want to make a cardigan with every single design that's in here, which might be something, <coughs> excuse me, that I do next year. I was thinking about doing like a patchwork cardigan every month with a different theme. I don't know, you guys let me know if that's something you're into, but doing some of the silly granny squares and doing like a crochet with me type process. But I love all the designs in here. There's even like little waffles and fruit. There's holiday ones. There's animals. I really like the apple one. Probably because I'm a teacher, you know, might be biased. Um, there's even some plain ones that are just colorful designs, not really like shapes or animals or anything. But I'm absolutely in love with this book. Definitely a worthwhile purchase if you see it somewhere. I got mine on Amazon. Also, if you're into making baby blankets, the animal ones, like the little sheep, or I think you can see the lion there too, um, would be super cute as baby blankets. I know my little brother growing up had a Noah's Ark themed bedroom, so I know that that's a common baby room theme. So if you know someone who's doing that, um, making granny squares with all the animals on them would be super cute. All of the granny squares in the book are also all the same size, so you can mix and match designs, which is really awesome. Second thing that I bought that isn't even out of the box yet is a new yarn ball winder. So I, the one I have, I like, it like wasn't a specific brand. It was real cheap on Amazon, but it's one of the ones that goes sideways. So there's like two types of yarn winders. They're the ones where the yarn cake winds like horizontally and then one where it winds vertically and like wobbles. 
So I have the horizontal one and I found that it gets so staticky that the yarn won't even stick to the ball anymore. So I decided to purchase a Knit Picks one, which is the like wobble kind. That probably makes no sense if you don't know what I'm talking about. Whoa, explosion of parts. So I decided to splurge and get the Knit Picks one. So if you've seen my other video, you've seen that my other yarn ball winder just kind of goes around like this. This one spins and the cake wobbles as you wind it. And I'm hoping that because it's not like so contained where it's winding that it won't be as static, as staticky as the other one was and that we can get rid of that issue. Looks like this pops in here. Yep. And then here's the little clamp. Wow, that was easy to put together. Didn't even need the directions. Huh. Maybe I do need the directions. Maybe I will have to look at those. We'll see. Yep, I'm definitely going to have to look at the directions for the bottom part, but that's what it looks like. It's a nice purple color instead of just the plain white like my old one. So I'm really excited to use that. And then, finally, I have a absolutely massive yarn haul from four different locations. And just, I bought a lot of yarn, guys. It was really bad. So I'm going to show you, like, in order of where I got it, I guess, and what I'm sort of planning to do with it. So first off, this was the only yarn that I like purchased with the intent for a project and did not get multiple options for said project. I got these three cotton yarns. They are all from Hobby Lobby. It's the I Love This Yarn Cotton in a dark green and a cream and the Yarn Bee Cotton DK in the color Sage. The Cotton DK has kind of a uh, this isn't roving, but the like fluffy texture, kind of like the homespun yarn. But I want to make a wall hanging for my guest bedroom, which also serves as my office. And these are the colors that I've got going on in there. So I picked one yarn that was textured to give it a little bit more interest. Um, this is hopefully going to be a video on YouTube if it goes well. So you'll be able to see that process as I make it. Um, but I'm very excited to have some of my yarn art hanging on the wall. <coughs> Next up, um, let's start with farmer's market yarn. So when I last went to the farmer's market, there was a lady there who was selling handmade uh, woven scarves, but she was also selling yarn and it looked like maybe she was clearing out her personal yarn stash because it wasn't hand spun yarn which I guess she also does it was definitely like had yarn labels on it um not necessarily like box store yarns but like fairly recognizable brands but she was selling them for three dollars a skein and it was all natural fibers so I was like okay well that's a good deal like I don't normally buy wool yarn or a alpaca yarn so I ended up buying quite a bit from her I got four of these. Um, it's kind of a light mushroom brown and it's Barocco Ultra Wool DK. It's 100% superwash wool. Um, I had heard of this brand before but I've never seen it in stores. And it's 292 yards. It's a lightweight three. It's really soft. I usually don't like wool because to me it feels scratchy but I'm really excited to use this. Um, I kind of bought it just to support her because as I was walking I was like oh if she's selling her yarn stash maybe she's moving maybe she just has too much and needs to get it out and it was a good deal and most of it was still in the like clear plastic bags that you buy it in like this 
Um, so very well preserved. So I just bought it even though I don't really have a plan for it yet. I'll probably use it to make more triangle shawls because that seems to be my favorite thing. Um, but I really liked this brown color a lot. The other color I got from her is, I should have undone the bag on this one first. Um, just hear all the weird noises today. Is this one. It's Annie Blatt yarn. This one's also, she said it was 100% wool. I can't see the other side of the ball band. It's like tucked in there pretty good. Um, oh, there it is. Superwash wool. Yeah. Um, wow, this is an odd yarn tag. I've never seen one like this before. It's 130 yards. I got four of these. They all came in a bag again and it's that light like lilac pinkish purple color. So really pretty. Again, don't know what I'm going to use it for, but thought it was a good opportunity to support another maker in cleaning out her stash. All right, now we get to the crazy part. So I have a couple weddings, showers, formal events, all sorts of stuff that is happening over the summer. But I realized that none of the people in any of the groups know each other. So I can get away with wearing the same formal dress to every event other than the one wedding where I'm in the bridal party. Um, so I got a gorgeous vintage style dress, but it's in like an avocado green color, which is a very cool color, but it's very hard to match. So when I went yarn shopping, I decided I wanted to make myself, you guessed it, a triangle shawl to match the dress because I live in the Midwest. Most of these events are taking place in the Midwest. And if the air conditioning is on in buildings around here, it can get so cold so fast. And I hate being too cold or too warm. I just don't deal well with temperatures that are not where I want it to be. So I decided I was going to make myself a triangle scarf that could be worn as a shawl because that's lighter weight than taking like a jacket or a sweater with you, but will still do the job if it's like freezing inside of a venue. So I went a little crazy at Michael's and at Joann's. Um, and somehow left with some yarn that was not for the intended project at all. So I'll start with the, the ones that like definitely weren't to go with the dress. Um, part of the problem was that Michaels was having a buy one get one free or get one 50% off sale on yarn. So that's where some of this came from. I got a Karen Cotton Angel Cake in the color Dark Cocoa. To me this looks more of a purpley brown than like a brown brown. But... I thought the color was pretty. I have no other reason for why I bought it. The end. <laughs> um, also, like, one of the ones I got for the dress is the same one, and I was trying to keep the yarn brands the same for the BOGO thing. Um, the other one I got that does not match the dress, wouldn't go with the dress, but I got it because one of the other colors I got does, is the Flex yarn in the color light gray and I'm glad I picked this one up because I think it's beautiful. It's gray but it has occasional touches of like cream, almost yellow, and then like a really deep grayish lavender in those little puffs. Um, this yarn is super soft. I am absolutely in love with it. I will 100% be making something for myself out of this because it's such a pretty color and it's a really unique yarn. So. Again, didn't need it, but because of that BOGO, whatever it was, sale, I bought it anyway. Okay, on to the ones that I purchased, thinking that they would maybe go with the dress. If you follow me on TikTok, you've already seen these because I asked TikTok to help me decide. So I'll show the one that was the final pick on TikTok at the end. First one is another Flex yarn. The shoes I have to go with the dress are a cream color, like kind of lacy. So some of the things I picked were cream and some of the things I picked were more to match the dress. 
So I picked up the Flex in the color Ivory. Um, it's mostly ivory, but it actually has the same tones in it as the gray one does of the like buttery, almost yellow color and then the like deep grayish lavender. Um, so since I have decided I'm not using this for that dress, um, I might even use both of those colors together for one project. Um, other one that didn't make it was Karen Cotton Cakes in the color green grapevine. So this lightest shade of green is the same color as the dress. I probably will still make myself something with this one because I just wear green a lot and I like this kind of teal sage color. Um, it just didn't end up being my final pick for those formal events. This one's a little bit more casual looking anyway so that's probably for the best. Um, option number three was plain old Bernat Softy Cotton in, what color is it? The color is called cotton. Um, this was more to match the shoes. Very pretty. We'll definitely still use it. Wasn't the final pick. And finally, the yarn that I was probably the most excited about, so I'm glad that everybody else felt the same way, was the True Boo in the color Celery. I bought four of these. I think that this is definitely going to look the best with the dress because it's exactly the right color. I was so excited when I found this, but I didn't want to give up the other things I had already picked. Um, yeah, going to make a triangle shawl with it. I might use one of the patterns I've already created. I might come up with something new, but I got to get going on it fast because it is coming up rather soon. Um, that's it for my podcast today. I hope you enjoyed listening and seeing all of the ridiculous yarn purchases I made. I now have to go clean up all of the yarn that's on my floor next to my desk. I will see you guys in the next video. Coming up next should be the next um, set of squares for the Harry Styles cardigan and the Tunisian crochet stitches, so you can stay tuned for that. See you in the next video. Bye everybody!